that marriage was was doomed at that point. So we get to the point where uh, Frank basically is, is assuming that Rick, uh, his son, and Lester, they're having a full blown affair. Yeah. And he confronts his son about it. And he says something that's, that's really, you know, it's kind of fucked up. He said, you know, you'd rather have a dead son basically than a gay one. Yeah. You'd know, rather him be dead and yeah. not exist. And it that hurts Rick's feelings. You can see it in his face. Like, I can't believe you just, you know, you're my father. You're, you're rather such a be- small minded person. Yeah. Just like <laughs> he looked at him like he was less than nothing when yeah. he said that. Yeah. It was, it was a weird moment. Like you're nothing. Yeah. You know, just for you to say something like that. Yeah. <laughs> so, and his father act literally told him, don't come back. Like you leave, don't come back. Ricky feels bad for his father for being so small minded. Yes. Yes. But then we find out. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and we would definitely get to that. Rick uh, goes goes next door to Jane's home and tells her that uh, he asked her, would she leave to New York with go. him? And he has $40,000. She saved up $3,000 over some years babysitting and stuff like that. And uh, she says yes. So that sparks a big argument with her, Angela, and Rick uh, because Clearly, Angela, have ne- she's never liked Rick. She's always thought he was a weirdo, a creep, blah, blah, blah. So they're arguing. And at this point in time, Rick strips Angela down and tells her, like, you're not pretty at all. Yeah. You think this about yourself. You're actually basically you telling her you're really an ugly person on the inside. Mm-hmm. You know, on the outside, you might be blonde and beautiful, but you're actually a really horrible person. Yeah. And she feels it so yeah. much where it, yeah. it breaks her down. She starts crying. And uh, you start to see the the vulnerability of Angela because the whole movie, she was just a strong, blonde woman who understood her sexual power and stuff. But when Rick checked her, she turned into a little girl again. Yeah. We seen we seen her true identity, which she just a teenage girl. Yeah. Yeah. Insecure. Insecure. Yeah. All that stuff. But it took for Rick to tell her that for her to actually see it. And he said it so calmly. Yeah. As, Rick, as only Rick can do. Yeah. Said it very calmly. Yeah, you're not you're not pretty. You're ugly. <laughs> like there's nothing pretty about you. So um, so they have an argument. Frank confronts Lester in the garage. Huh. Soaking wet. It's a rainy night. Uh, uh Lester lets him in the garage. Lester's thinking he's comforting a man going through whatever he's going through with his son or whatever and stuff. And Frank tries to kiss Lester. He's been a closet homosexual the whole time. He's been closet. The whole he time. has not been able to be his true self, and it has driven him to insanity. I'm gonna tell you when I saw that part, <laughs> I said I didn't fucking see this twist coming at oh all. My God. What I thought so was good. gonna happen, he's gonna beat the shit out of Lester. Yeah, that's what I thought. He was yeah. just gonna be like, "Are you sleeping with my son?" Blah blah blah. Boom boom, and just I thought he was gonna beat him to a pulp. No, if not shooting, but I definitely thought it was going to be a lot of violence. But I saw him try to kiss him, and even Lester was like, hey, "Yo," because he got the whole context I, wrong. I'm not that way. What's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was it was weird seeing that, but but you know you've heard uh, gay men and women say this all the time. Usually, people who go super hard homophobic, those are the ones. Because <laughs> your average person doesn't care. I mean, this is just years and years of having this secret inside of you. And that's what makes this kind of crazy person. Yeah. And also, he's getting rejected for being himself for the first time. Yeah. And so it reinforces that he was wrong. That he is not, you know, he's not healthy. He's not healthy. And that's the breaking point. Yeah. (laughs) And he definitely, it definitely was a breaking point. (laughs) And that's the breaking point. Literally a breaking point. Um. So Lester um, catches Angela crying. She yeah. hasn't she hasn't left their house. So he catches her crying. Uh, he does another thing stupid. He offers her a teenager a beer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he tries to comfort her, and uh, he sees her as just this beautiful angel, angelic thing. So he sees her. He's built up who she is. Yes, he's bought into the confident young woman who is in control of her sexuality who knows who she is yes and that's why he's giving her a beer that's yeah. what you would do with a woman with a woman who knows themselves <laughs> right, right but this is a child right it's a child who craves this type of attention needs it she needs, needs it. this attention to validate so she, herself she loves that he's given her this that lester's given her this attention so they get into 
uh, undressing. He's undressing her. You know, her breasts are out and stuff. And she says, basically, she's a virgin. She's a virgin. She's a virgin. She has which, none of the sexual experience that she's claimed to have had. Which was the worst thing that he could want to hear. Shatters the image. It just shatters, shatters the image. Now he's an old creepy man taking yes. advantage of a child. And he knew it and at it that moment. like a ton of bricks. He knew it at that moment. <laughs> it's I'm brilliant. the old creepy dude. It's brilliant. It's great writing. Great writing. Because the narrative that he has crafted that goes along with what she's putting forth mm -hmm. is completely shattered. Yeah. We we do it all the time. Yeah. We yeah. make up the backstory. Yeah. We 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 put what we want there. Yeah. And when the stark reality, that's not the way it is. It's the same as the military dad who's a repressed homosexual. The narrative it's is wrong. wrong. The narrative, the, the is, narrative wrong. is wrong. The image yeah. is shattered. And she spent the whole entire movie telling people about her sexual building adventures. It up, building it up. The whole movie. She's more advanced. Even when she was around Lester, she would touch on him and talk softly and sweet and sexually, play them, those mind games with them. To hear her say she had never done this before was like, even me watching, I'm like, the first time I watched, I was like, holy shit. This girl duped everybody. It was yeah. a great white hype. You fake it till you make it. You fake it till you, you make it. it. If that's who she it. wants to be, she fakes it. She makes yeah. up all the stories. We do this on little small scales throughout our life. But especially as you are a kid deciding who you are, who you want to be, yeah. what success is. You you do it more and you ham it up and and yeah. and you pretend to be yeah. someone who's confident. We do see it amongst teenagers more than anything. You see, uh, men and women, uh, you know, young boys and girls lying about their sexual adventures. Of oh yeah, I just had a threesome. Their conquest. Yeah, it's like they're dude, conquest. you're fourteen. You did have not had a threesome. <laughs> Stop fucking lying. Man. Like, <laughs> like we. I've heard those stories when I was a teenager. You hear these wild stories about 14-year-old boys having these sexual conquests. And, and any any adult <laughs> in their right mind would know this. But an adult who's going through a midlife crisis who has reverted back to being their teenager not only is blinded from the fact that this is just a teenager who's trying to uh, build themselves up, but wants it to be that way. Yeah. And yeah. so it's reinforced. Yeah.